have that tongue cut me like a double-edged sword. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't expect to hear a 25-minute message on my answer machine, but I kept it just to remind me that the devil is in your closest circle. Yeah. Right. Closest yeah. circle. And to this day, okay. to this day, God said to me, what have they done to me? Do you think you're any better than I? Mm. You ain't no better than I. So when they crucify me, they're going to crucify you. And when they crucify you, they crucify you because you are walking in the light. Yeah. You have to walk in the light in order for other people who have demons inside of you to wake up and see what's there. Wake them up. So the thing is, my God is good, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. He is everlasting. Yeah. He is my anchor. He is my joy. He is my peace. Yeah. And there's nothing else in this life that I want to do besides give him nothing but the praise.
Lord. Come on, in this place, do we have some praises? Do we have some glorifiers? Do we have anybody that wants to live? Our Lord, our Savior, our God. Uh, for Jesus is good to all of us. He has saved us. He has kept us through all that is going on. And so we've entered into this place today to praise his holy name. For God is good. And he is worthy to be praised. So we stand to our feet this morning, getting ourselves ready to glorify him and to lift him up, to worship his holy name. We've come this morning because he's kept us. He's awakened us into a brand new day. And so we want to lift him up and magnify his holy name. Amen? Amen. Let us look unto the Lord. Our God and our Father, again, we thank you. We magnify you. We glorify you. For the, that the fact that you woke us up early this morning started us on our way with the blood still running warm in our veins. So God, right now, we've come on holy ground. We've come into a holy place. We bow down before you and we lift your holy name. Now God, right now, in the name of Jesus, and by the power of the moving of the Holy Spirit, move us now out of where we are in this time and this place. Move us to a higher level that we will praise and glorify you that the windows of heaven will be open and hear the praises we give unto you. And somehow, God, you will bless us that we would realize that we are in your presence. So have your way with these that have gathered, for those that are on the way, those that are watching and will watch. We want to magnify you and we want to lift you up. Hear this prayer, O oh Lord, in the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. And all that love the Lord say amen, 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 amen. and amen. In the front of your bulletins this morning, our congregational hymn at the cross.
give the Lord some praise if it's a good morning. We are grateful that the Lord has spared our lives. We are here to lift him up and to magnify him. No matter what the weather outside is, the S-O-N is shining on the inside. Amen? And so, again, we come today and we thank God for this opportunity to fellowship, come together where the Lord said two or three of God that he promised he would be there. And so we're here to lift him up and to thank him for what he has done for us. Amen? Amen. Again, we want to uh, ask each and every one uh, to participate in our Women's Day on the second Sunday, none other than our Reverend Rose Dean will be our preacher for the hour. Amen. Amen. And again, every Wednesday night, Bible study has started back at 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. If, in fact, you want to be part of it and you're not on the email list, please get that information to us via uh, Sister Gaylord or First Lady Sharon. And we will make sure that we get you on the list so that you are ready and prepared uh, for the week's lesson. Amen? Amen. Again, we are grateful um, for each and every one that continue to contribute. Uh, we're looking to make sure now time is getting closer, weather is changing, fall is coming, leaves are changing. And we want to be able to get outside so that we can uh, put our time capsule in. So I want to appeal to everyone, please take the opportunity to get the information from uh, 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 Deaconess Tina Russell, or First Lady, so that you can fill that information out, get it to us, and so that when we are ready to put the time capsule in, your information is in there. So again, uh, we don't want to wait until the last minute. Somebody say, oh, I wanted to do it. No, it's a little late. That's not I'm taking it back up again. Amen? We want to let the people know in the future what God has done for us right now in the present. And so again, we want to remember the saints of all. We want to remember our family members, those that have come through these doors of Pilgrim Baptist Church. And so again, take the opportunity, get that information, and fill it out. Again, every third and fourth Sunday, we collect for uh, the Urban League, for those that are coming out of incarceration, all of the items that are personal needs, all of that clothing, all of that is given unto them to give to those that have come out of incarceration. So again, be mindful that the Bible in Matthew 25 said, if you do it unto the least of them, you do it unto me. Amen? So again, we want to do that. Now, let me just say that uh, we're endeavoring to do a multitude of different uh, seminars, health seminars. So... Let me just tell you, some of the seminars will be uh, understanding blood pressure, also known as hypertension, uh, healthy food or healthy living, nutritional facts, diabetes, self-management, education program, and there are other programs that we can get if, in fact, we get people to participate. So again, we're looking, I'm looking for the members of Pilgrim Baptist Church to be part of this. We want you to come in, be part of these seminars. We can't set these seminars up until we have a certain amount of people. So again, today, uh, we are going to put it on Facebook. We are going, we've already sent it out to those members that we have your email address. We're going to put up forms uh, on the uh, bulletin boards in the foyer. We want you to sign up. Pastor wants to see you here. You know some people that got diabetes. Everybody in here knows somebody got diabetes. Raise their hand. Just about everybody in here. Amen. Anybody know people that got hypertension? Okay. Anybody know that some people need to go on a diet? <laughs> Amen. And, and so there are other things that we can do as well. One of the things uh, that we're going to attempt to do is I'm going to bring in um, the director of the emergency uh, unit here at Overlook Medical Center and as well uh, attempt to bring in the director of the emergency center at Union, which covers an area of all of our people, and to get them to talk to us. And so, again, I think it's important 
that you take an interest in your own health, take an interest in your family health, all of that. We want to fill this place on those days that we're going to do it. Deacon Walker has so kindly uh, stepped up to be the coordinator. And so again, we want you to support yourself first, support our church, support what Deacon Walker is trying to do for us so that we can now uh, have as much good health as possible. So again, this information will be uh, given to each of you. Sign up, get fam uh, family members. We're going to send it out to the other churches as well. So again, this is an opportunity. It's an open door opportunity that Overlook Medical Center is giving to us to come in and to do this for us. So I don't want to. I don't want to know later on. You say, Pastor, you know, I'm in the hospital because I got diabetes. I'm gonna say that you go to the seminar. You say no to me. I'm gonna say shame on you. Amen. 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 We got it. Let's deal with it. Whatever it is, we need to deal with it. And when we were doing these seminars before, there were several people that were diagnosed, followed it up, realized they had hypertension, they had diabetes, so forth and so on. Let us be proactive in our own health. Amen? Amen. As well, I want to share with you also from the Philemon Missionary Baptist Church, more so for our ladies, but brothers, you can also chime in and, and get your wife, girlfriend, daughters. They are having a, um, I guess it's pocketbook bingo. And it is going to be uh, in November uh, the 11th from 1 to 5. And so again, we want to make sure um, that we uh, be involved with that as much as possible. They support us in what we do. This information, the flyer, will be on the bulletin board as well. It will be part of our Facebook page. Amen? Amen. So let us be mindful. Also, I do want to meet with um, our, our committee for our programs after service so that I can go over two quick things with you and let you know and then if you have any questions I can try to as best possible answer them. Also coming up in October, for those that are interested and it's very close by, October 6th and 8th at the Fountain Baptist Church will be the General Baptist Convention of New Jersey, their annual sessions. So again, they are going to be in the evening. Um, if you want to uh, partake of that, this information will be on the bulletin board. Amen? Amen? Come on, stand to your feet. You don't even have to open your Bibles, you just have to listen. We're going back to Luke again. Luke 11, verse 4. And forgive us of our sins. For as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen? Amen. Thus is the end of our reading for our scripture this morning. We ask God to take that work in our heart. That we would repent, confess our sins, and then as well as he forgives us, we forgive those that have done things to us. Amen? As the choir prepares and starts to sing this morning, it is the opportunity for all of us to go to the throne of grace. It's the opportunity to be on holy ground and just stand there and allow God to work on us and to hear our solemn prayer. God doesn't want any fluff in the prayer. God wants you to be honest because that's what prayer is. It's an honest talking with God. Talking through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit picks it up and carries it to Christ. Sitting at the right hand of God. Interceding and advocating for all the things that we have done. Ask for our clearance in repentance. Ask for clearance in forgiveness. For he will forgive us of our sins. And he will help us to forgive those who sin against us.
the many today, Lord, who are struggling and are incarcerated. Maybe for some self-inflicted something, or maybe because they looked like somebody. Lord, I need you right now. Right now, Lord. All these lawmakers and all these folks who are causing long sentences and Lord, oh, touch them right now. Everybody make a mistake every now and then. That's why you sent your son to die for us so we can be forgiven for our sins. So Lord, help us today in our world, in our world leaders. Just touch them. Bring them down a notch or two so they can understand that they are not you. They don't own anything or anybody. Lord, we need you today, Lord, in a mighty way. Lord, I'd like to live with those who are going through depression right now. Right now. Because some people can't pay their rent. Some people can't pay their car. Some people are struggling buying school clothes. There's just so much going on out there today. Prick us and let us try to help somebody along the way. Lord, and let these folks know that you do have some folks in our world who know who you are, who will reach out and help somebody in need. Lord, we thank you for being God. We just thank you for being good. We know that you're able to do all things exceedingly well. But we also know that you work through people. So we got to step up and step out. Yeah, yeah. Things are bad right now. right now. I've heard it, I read about it all the time, and I just know things are bad right now. Right now. People are struggling. Oh, Little Lord. children are struggling. Oh, my Lord. Lord, I want to lift up those who somehow are tri trigger happy. Love to tote a gun. Oh, my Lord. Think that's the way to end everything. Touch them right now, Lord. Right now. Let them know that every life is valuable. Yeah. Let them know that you created everyone. Yeah. Created, you created everything that was good. Yeah. Let us love one another, Lord. Wow. Lord, we need more love in our world. Yeah. And we need it shown to every day. Yeah. We need to let people know we serve a loving God. We need to let them know that you can do anything but fail. Yeah. But you work through people. So, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, right now, to just help us be a better people. Help us be better churches. Help us just be better people who are willing to help somebody who don't look like us, don't talk like us. Help us today, Lord, in a mighty way. We know you're able. Yes, you are. We know you're willing. We know you can. But you want us to look up and seek your face. So I'm asking you right now, there's some non-believers non out there who don't want to seek your face. Touch them right now. Because you made them. We need you. In a mighty way. Many people sick in hospitals, nursing homes. Touch them right now. They may feel left alone. But we need to pray for them. If we can, we need to visit them. And let them know there still is a God. I know things may look bleak for you, but there still is a God who sits high and look low. And he knows everything that's going on. So we're thankful for you. We're thankful that we have someone we can pray to and feel better when we get off our knees or once we're done praying. So I want to thank you for being God. I want to thank you for being good. I want to thank you for bringing us as a people from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And, I, and I know some folks want to take us back. Yes. But we're not going back. We're, back. we're just going to watch you work. Yes. Because their arms are too short to box with you. So I'm asking right now, you continue to be God. You continue to be God. And we're going to forever give you the praise, give you the glory, and all the hallelujah that you so rightfully deserve. So Lord, we thank you today for being a mighty God, for being a good God who can do anything but fail. I pray this prayer in the wonderful name, the matchless name, the only name of Jesus. Amen.
for the ability to stand behind this sacred desk one more time. When you realize it's nothing that you did, but because of grace and mercy, he's kept you again. We ought to give him all of the praise, all of the worship, and all of the glory. Too many churches, too many pastors, bishops, cardinals, whatever else they call it themselves, want to be in the highlight, the front line. Christ needs to be the center, the highlight, the front line. That everyone sees. Choirs are too busy having a dance contest instead of saying, singing to the glory of God. And people want to know what happened to the church is because we let any and everything happen in the church. Jesus said, Upon this, upon this one. I will build my church. You see, and this is what's happening in the church. People are turned off. Believers, true believers are turned off by all the nonsense that's going on. We've got to get back to what God wants us to do. And we've got to start focusing on what God has told us to do. And forgive us of our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. How to forgive others can be a stumbling block for everyone. That there is no exception to the rule. When someone hurts you, the hurt is the focus on your mind, your heart, and even your soul. That there is some point or even multiple points of trust that become broken with you and that person. And the truth is, we can extend it. It is not only you having a trust broken with you, but it is also a trust that is broken with God. Jesus says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Amen. You see, when you go against the word of God, you not only go against that person, but you go against what God tells us to do. I said points because some people don't hold the same things sacred or true. There are a variety of viewpoints about everything in life. I read the Mayo Clinic staff said, who hasn't been hurt by the actions or the words of another? Perhaps a parent constantly criticized you growing up? A colleague sabotaged a project on your job? Or your partner had an affair? Or maybe you had a traumatic experience such as being physically or emotionally abused by someone close to you? These words can leave lasting feelings of resentment, bitterness, anger, and sometimes just pure hatred. But if you hold on to this pain, that's why I want to stop right now. You got to ask God to free you from the pain. But then you've got to trust that God's going to free you in due time. See, as long as you continue to walk around like holding on to what someone did, you'll never get beyond the storm. Remember last week I used the story about the, the, the daughter driving the pastor? And it wasn't until she got out of the storm that the father said, pull over and look where he brought you out of. You see, you've got to keep pressing towards the mark of a high calling in Christ. And so therefore, he will relieve the pain. He will take care of your anguish. He will deal with your hatred. He will deal with your bitterness if you just allow him to move you out of it. Let me tell you that my brothers and my sisters, 
you might be the one who pays most dearly in the situation. By embracing forgiveness, you can all uh, you also can embrace peace and hope. Consider how forgiveness can lead you down the path of a physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. You see, when we deal with this and we hold on to the bitterness, we hold on to the anger, it not only does something to our mind, it does something to our heart, and it causes us to have physical anguish. Yes, yes. Forgiveness means different things to different people. But in general, it involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. You have to have intentional meaning to let go of what is hurt you. There's some people that love a good pity party. You say to them, it just, how you do it? Well, I guess you better have an hour just to sit there because they're going to tell you everything that happened to them. And, and I simply want to say to you, let's not be one of those people. Let's trust in God and sell them simply the Lord is working it out. Y'all hear me? You see, the Lord is working out everything that's going on in your life. You just got to be a little patient and be encouraged that he's going to work it out to the good of what you need to be done. That, that hurts or offended you might always be within you. I told you last week, you, you're just not going to forget what people do to you. But you've got to get beyond it and not stay in that situation. I told you, you can't let nobody camp out in your mind, your heart, and your soul that's not about giving you good or doing good for you or helping you through your situation. You see, when you allow people to camp out and not pay any rent for the anger and all of the things that they give you, you're allowing them to take space and control over your life. Let me say to you, but working on forgiveness can lessen that act uh, grip that it has on you. It, it can help you free uh, free you from the control of the person who has harmed you. You see, too many times we allow that person to stay in our mind. We allow them to talk to us uh, through the act that they did. Let me just simply say to you, my God can do all things exceedingly and abundantly well. He can move me out of that situation. You see, when we deal with this, sometimes forgiveness might even lead to feeling uh, feelings of understanding and empathy and compassion for the one who has hurt you. Okay. If I thought right. there was anybody on the face of the earth right. that had not hurt somebody, Amen. then I could probably say that in the midst of it that they would not need this. But everybody's been hurt by somebody Amen. or something in their life. <laughs> Deacon Walker, I, I, I did a little research. I went to psychology today, and there's an article in uh, July 22 that said, we've all been there in the course of your life. Someone did something awful that hurt you, for which you have harbored resentment. If you Google forgiveness, there are many articles about the merits of forgiveness in essence, how it benefits you. How much better things would be if you just let it go. And how it's about releasing yourself from the prison of the victim role. Let, let me just say to you, and I have some article, the article right there, that there are a number of things in the article 
and, and I read it, and, and if it wasn't something that would be beneficial to you, I, I would not have copied it and had Sister Gaylord copy to give to you. But, but anybody today, if you're struggling with not being able to forgive somebody, that there are some steps over there in those things of psychology today that might help you to begin to get through that situation. I'm not going to let anybody keep me as a victim and keep putting down on me and keep hurting me over and over again. You see, I know that there is the ability through God to pull me out of my muck and my fire, put me into a solid mind to be able to say I forgive you and move on. You see, I don't want to be in that place that every day it's torment. Every day I wake up. Why me? I was at a funeral the other day. At the end, they were closing in. One of the parishioners that were there at the service, I, I got to believe it was a family member. I heard them say at the casket as they leaned over, why me, God? Why me? The thought went in my mind, you're still alive. God did not do what he did to hurt you. But God did it to relieve whomever he took from what was going on with them. You see, you got to want God to relieve you from all that's going on in your life. You, you, you got to ask God first and foremost, forgive me of my sins. You can't expect somebody to forgive you when you don't want to be forgiven. You don't ask God to forgive you of your sins. The phrase forgive and forget. Forgive is one thing, forget is another. Hear me today, it is not found in the Bible. However, there is a number of verses commanding us to forgive one another. Matthew 6 and 14, Ephesians 4 and 32. A Christian who is not willing to forgive Others will find the fellowship with God hindered. Come on now. Yes. You want to know why you still having the difficulty you have? Come on, preacher. First, ask God to forgive you of your sins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then ask God to give you the power to forgive those that have sinned against you. In yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. against you. He commands us to forgive 
So therefore, it is a conscious effort that we choose uh, what to obey. We choose God and we forgive. Yeah, yeah. The offender may not desire forgiveness. Now, I need to stop there. Sometimes people don't think they did nothing to you. Somebody say amen. Yeah. In, in law enforcement, as an investigator, when I called the prosecutor's office and something happened, they would say to me first, what did the person feel? Did the person feel threatened? Did they feel that this was going to happen? And, and if I would say yes, then they say, okay, they broke the law. There are some people that don't think that they've done nothing to them. They tell you all, they cuss you out. Do I need to go down the list? They do all of that, they think they have done you a favor. I've been saying Hallelujah. I've been saying about it. I've been living on my mother in my mind. I've been given salvation. I didn't pay for it. He gave it to me. And so therefore, if I am to move forward in my life, I've got to learn how to forgive others and move on. Whether they think they've done something to me or they didn't. Who will eat you out of house and home 
every time they come and won't bring nothing there whatsoever. You see, that's the devil. He'll eat up your joy. He'll eat up your worship. He'll eat up your peace. He'll eat up everything and leave you bitter, leave you mad, done everything he could to destroy you. The Bible states that God does not remember our wickedness. Hebrews 8 and 12. But God is still all known. God remembers that we have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But having been forgiven, we are in a positional or a, a judgmental, justified situation. You see, he's forgiven us of our sins against him. And therefore, we're in a position that in the midst of it, God will now move us forward in the life that he has for us. Heaven is ours if we want it, as our sins had never occurred. If we belong to him through the faith in Christ, God does not condemn us of our sins. When you forgive somebody, stop talking about it. Stop spreading it all over. Oh, I forgave them. Did you know I forgave them? Do you know they did not? If you forgave them, then it's forgotten and it's over with, it's over, it's in that garbage can. You ain't listen. The only reason you're going back in there is because you want to talk about it some more. You, you want somebody else to know it. I, I don't need anybody to know what you did to me. I, I don't need anybody to know. I, I got a God that already knows what you did. And in due time and in just place, he going to handle what I did to somebody. He going to handle what you did to somebody. And all we can do is repent of our sin. If by forgiving and forgiving, one means I choose to forgive the offender for the sake of Christ and move on with my life. That this is wise and godly uh, course of action. As such is that, the, that you can do and within the possibility of what God will do for you through Christ. We should forget what is behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. God put stuff behind us. When you keep talking about it, you ain't put it behind you. When you keep bringing it up, you ain't put it behind you. So therefore, you have not forgiven, such as the Bible tells us to do. And we put it behind us and strive toward what is ahead. We should forgive each other, just as in Christ forgave us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see, we must not allow a root of bitterness to spring up in our heart. When we allow bitterness to come in our heart and to live there, we allow hatred, all of those other things, then it is easy for the devil to walk right through the door. Because hatred will open the door, and it is that bitterness will swing the other side, and Satan will walk right into the midst of your heart. Forgiveness, forgiveness involves not holding a sin against a person any longer. But forgiveness is different uh, from the fact of trusting somebody. <laughs> Listen, that's why it's important for all of us to repent. You trust people by what they show you Amen. and not what they tell you. Amen. It's wise to take precautions and sometimes the dramatics of a relationship will have, will have to change. I got some friends that still my friend, but I know not to deal with them on that level. Amen. You hear me? I speak to everybody. Amen. I, I talk to everybody. If you, you call me up and you say you need some help, whether you've done it wrong, I'm going to try to help you because that's what God wants me. I 
I've had people say to me, and you probably had the same thing. This is me, Let me hold some. <laughs> that the Lord is going to pick me 
me up and turn me around. You see, I'm trusting that the Lord is going to build you up on every side. I'm trusting that when you can't call me, you can't call anybody else, that you're going to trust that the Lord's going to show up and show out in your situation. When nothing else seems to work, I, can I get a witness? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Yes, trust on the other hand. That in a future behavior, this person through Christ, through the salvation that he offered you and offered me, it will likely take effect and it will build and rebuild that person to be the person that God wants them to be. Then, the definition of forgiveness is essentially... The act of pardoning an offender. Well, uh -huh. in the Bible, the Greek word translated forgiveness literally means let it go. Let it go. As when a person does not demand payment for a debt. I stopped by to tell you this morning that Jesus paid the price. Paid the price. Way back on Calvary. I heard the safe Father forgive them, for they know now what they do. Somewhere along the line, we've got to take the same type of attitude. If you want forgiveness to work in your life, use the words that Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not uh, what they do. Yeah. I stopped by uh, this morning to tell you, uh, to tell somebody, uh, he knows uh, about your pain, uh, and he knows uh, about your sorrow, uh, and he knows uh, about your sadness, uh, and he knows uh, what they do to you, uh, and they know. How they abuse you, uh, but I stop by to tell you uh, that God will uh, acknowledge your pain. Uh, God will uh, take you through it. Uh, God will uh, change your thinking. Uh, God will uh, take another viewpoint. Uh, remember, uh, God said, uh, if you forgive them uh, like I forgave you. Walk on out of here with 
joy in your heart, a renewed spirit, and a brand new sight. Walk out of here with shouting in your voice. Walk out of here with clapping in your hands. Walk out of here knowing he will see you through. And I got a witness today. Won't you trust him and see what he'll do? If I got a witness today, why don't you say, God will make a way for me? God will take care of my hurt. God will restore my heart. God will put joy in my life. God will see me. God will lift me up. Have I got a witness today? Won't God do it for you? The doors of the church are now open. If there's anyone ready to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, whether you're online or in person,
I hope something that was said would encourage you, but I hope something that was said will encourage others who live in a mean and cruel world. Foreign leaders, leaders of our country, they're throwing mud at each other, pointing fingers at each other. And yet, they're supposed to be the ones that are leading our countries. God wants us to wake up. He wants us to get ourselves together. The church belongs to Christ. All of the nonsense that we led in the church is not of Christ. So, you've been told, now it's on you. It's, it's not one of those things, I'll take it or leave it, it's a command. Can I say it one more time? It's a command. So, if it's a command, that means that you're going to be held to that. Amen? Amen. There are five things on that sheet over there. It's good to have. It's good to help you. And if you're, if you're struggling, these, this comes from psychology today. And I think, you know, you can read it. You can apply it to your life, but apply the word of God to your life. And God's going to get you through whatever it is. Free yourself today. I'm going to say it one more time. Those that are here in the sanctuary, those that are watching, free yourself today. The person that you're forgiving doesn't have the key to hold you in. You have the key. Amen? Um, Sister Deaconess Mary Freeman came home from rehab. Brother Dr. Nichols is out of the hospital and in rehab right now. Thank you so much, Brother Lee, for stepping in. We appreciate that so much. Next week, I think this one is probably the hardest. How to forgive yourself. And I told you before, you, you got to admit some things. Sometimes, be careful about what you admit to somebody else. But when you admit it to God, you'll never hear it again. Admitting what you've done wrong, not to appease someone, but to change yourself. That's what we're going to talk about next week. Give it yourself. Because if you can't look at yourself in the mirror, I don't mean to see if your hair look good, your makeup's on straight, your beard, your mustache is trimmed properly. But if you can't look at yourself really in the mirror and have a little talk with you and Jesus, then you're still at the point of where you haven't forgiven yourself. So we're going to we try to talk about that next week. Now, I know some people, they said they're going to watch it today, or they're going to, if they didn't get it today, they're going to look at it again.
The good thing about this is it's recorded. You can go back and take your notes. You can go back and examine all those scriptures, look them up, pen them down, put them on your mirror, put them on your refrigerator, put them on your car, on the dashboard. Uh, if, if you if you somewhat don't have nosy people on your job, but if they are nosy, put it on there because then maybe they need to see it as well. Y'all hear me? Don't be afraid to correct yourself. Amen? Again, let us, next Sunday is first Sunday. Again, we want to be here. Let's try to get here a little earlier. I know now when I look out, I see who are good Baptist people because they don't mind the rain. Say it a little louder for the ladies. What can separate me from the love of God? I want to see our committee afterwards. Uh, next week, people will we'll have all those sign up sheets. And listen, people, I'm serious. These are great information. It's coming in. It's free. You'd have to go to your doctor. You'd have to pay something to get this information. Overlook Medical Center is doing this for us for free. So use it. Tell your friends. Tell your family member. We need people to sign up. Once they sign up, then Deacon Walker can schedule all of those things. And then we can start looking into the new year for some more things, some more subject matters to be able to do that. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Look around. Give them that Jesus smile, that Jesus wave. Amen? Amen. Let's look up to the Lord. Our God and our Father, we thank you for how you have forgiven us of our sins. We thank you because we realize that there's nothing that we have or nothing that we can do that could have paid the debt that we owe to you. So God, right now, thank you. Now God, we ask that you would work on our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Oh God, help us to be a forgiver like Christ was a forgiver of our sins. Right now, God, help us to grow stronger. Help us to go beyond where those that do things to us try to lock us in a, a, a prison cell. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, give us that ability that when we leave here, we leave free. We leave our mind open, not only to hear your word, but to be doers of your word. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that thou would go out and touch those right now. Somebody right now is contemplating harm to someone. Right now, God, through the power and the moving of the Holy Spirit, send down your spirit upon them. Rebu rebuke them from doing wrong. Rebuke them from hurting someone else. Right now, God, for those that are running our country and running every country, right now, God, through the power of Jesus Christ, through the moving of the Holy Spirit, rebuke them in the right way that they might understand what it is that they're supposed to do. God, give us strength that we might be ambassadors into the world, that we might tell them of a Savior and all that he can do for them. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we leave this place, we ask that your grace and mercy go with us, that it will be with us every step of the way. Now unto him who can hold us faultless before the everlasting throne. May his love rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. And all that love the Lord, say amen.